Do you also get these kind of issues when uploading images on your WordPress website? I'm talking about specific issues like this. You start uploading any image on your site and you see the image is uploading nicely, but then you see this kind of errors. Unable to create directory, is parent directory writable by the server or a variation of this error. The essential idea is that you are not able to upload images on your site. And if you previously uploaded images on your site, either you can't select them or they're completely appearing blank on your site. The root cause of this problem is exactly the same. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to fix this issue on your WordPress website. But before that, let me just try and explain the root cause to you so that you understand what we are actually doing. So similar to how we have files and folders on our computer, your website is actually a collection of files and folder on a server. And when your hosting provider uh, performs some maintenance on the server, sometimes a software update or a bug or some, I say, errors cause configuration issues or misconfigurations of certain folders on your site, which cause this issue. So we'll fix those configuration issues by using something called FTP. So similar to how you can access files and folders on your computer directly, if you want to access files and folders on a remote server or your website server, we'll need to use FTP, which is short for File Transfer Protocol. So don't worry if it sounds complicated, it's actually very simple to use. Just go to google.com and search for FileZilla. It's an FTP client that you can use to connect with FTP or connect via FTP to the remote server. And be using FileZilla and your FTP credentials to connect to your site, and then we'll fix the all the issues that your website is having. All right, so just go to FileZilla like this and I'll just open this uh, in a new tab, how the website looks like. It's completely free to use and this is for Windows. For Mac, I'll paste uh, something on the screen, uh, a popular software. So you can go to that website and download the solution for Mac as well. So once you're on the site, Make sure to click download files a client and just download the client. It's a small exe file that will be downloaded to your computer. Just install it like regular software. There's no adware, there's no spyware. It's completely free to use. So once that's done, we are uh, done with FileZilla. Next thing we need to do is find our FTP credentials. Now, what are FTP credentials? They're similar to username and password, how you access your website. You have a certain set of credentials that are required for FTP. And every hosting provider has uh, FTP obviously already is, but the credentials are also usually available inside the hosting account directly. You don't have to go and find them in some, some place or uh, always chat with support. Just to give an example, this website that I'm using is uh, hosted on Hostinger, and this is the admin area backend on the, on the website. And if you see, I'm inside the website section, inside the file section, and inside the FTP account section, where you see I'm seeing all the FTP related credentials that I'll be using to access my website, right? So once the, all of this is done, once you are ready with this, just find this information from either your hosting backend. And if you are able, unable to find this, it's all right to just contact support and they'll let you know where the credentials are or they'll share the credentials directly with you. Once you have these credentials, everything, then we can start using FileZilla to connect to your site. So I'll just open up FileZilla here. And this is what FileZilla looks like. When you start it up, it will just show you files from your computer. So you might be confused what's going on, where, where is the connection? So let me show you how we'll connect to our website. So you'll go into the file section and inside the file section, you'll go to the site manager. Because let's say for example, you have 10 different websites, you can just save the credentials, you can connect to different websites quickly. Now I already have finished the process here. You can see this here, but I'll show you how to do this yourself. So what I'll do is I'll just put this a little to the side off screen and I'll just open the site manager once again so I can just show it to you. So if you see all these credentials are exactly the same but I'll start new for, for, from scratch just to show you how the process is done. So once you're here you won't see the new site option you can click the new site button here and also rename this so you can say hey it's my site. So once you've done this rest all you have to do is just fill in the information here. So I'll just give an example here. FTP, the protocol remains FTP. The host is where you enter the IP address. So I'll just first, so it just works. So I'll copy the IP address. I'll paste it here. Encryption is fine. Port number is 21. You can just do it. Sometimes it will auto detect the port number as well. That also works. Then the username is the username here. We'll copy this here. And the password is obviously not visible on the screen. So you have to have the FTP password. Sometimes the hosting provider will display the password on your admin area, but sometimes they'll not do it. For example, if you see here, if I make this okay, once again, I didn't have the option of looking at my password. I can reset my password. So I just, what I did, I changed my password to something that I have off screen and I've already saved those credentials in the FTP client FileZilla. So once you've done all of this, just click okay to save your changes, right? So they'll be saved. So if I click okay right now, it'll be saved. 
And once again, if I go back to my site manager, you will see the new site option is visible here which was what I created previously. And the my site is the new one, which doesn't have the password. So since I already have the password in the new site, I can use directly that, not the my site option. And once you're happy, once everything works or everything is set up for you, just click the appropriate site. For example, I have the new sites uh, selected, which has all the credentials in. You can just click the connect button. Right, so if I click the connect button, this FTP client will connect to my website's files and folders or server, and then I'll see the files and folders on my server, and then we'll fix the permission issues. So once I click connect, I have this set to a green color so that I can signify that, hey, I'm connected to my server. And you'll see these are the actual files and folders of your WordPress website. You have all these folders, all these files. We don't have to mess with everything. We just need to go into the WP content folder first. So click double click WP content and I'm inside here. And inside here, you see the uploads folder. You can double click on that to enter that as well. But sometimes you have issues like this and this is what we're trying to fix. So inside the upload folders, just to give an example, if accidentally you go inside a folder, for example, I am inside the WP content folder. Just double click on the double dot folder, which just means that you can go to the parent folder. So you can just go one folder up. So that's completely fine. So once again, WP content uploads folder is what we are interested in because whenever we upload images, the uploads folder is where the images actually go. So I'll right click the uploads folder and you see this file permissions option. This is what we need to configure. So I'll click the file permissions and you see a kind of a dialog box will open up with different variety of permissions. Don't worry, you don't need to memorize it, just follow the steps I'm gonna show you on the screen. So instead of messing around with these, just look at the numeric value. Right now set to 444, which is what is causing the issue. I change this to 744 and instantly you see some of these changes will be applied and that's completely fine, that's the intended thing. And once you have 744, make sure to enable this option, which is recurse into subdirectories and also, just changes to apply to directories only. The last part is also important. So I'll repeat what we did. We looked at the upload uh, folders properties or the file permissions. Then we change this to 744. Recursion into subdirectories is on and apply to directories only is set. Once this is done, I'll click OK. And we'll start making those changes to my websites folders. And depending on how many images I have, depending on how big the website is, this might take some time. But once it's done, you'll see, hey, content listing successful and nothing is happening here. While the processing is being done, you'll see these lights light up constantly. So now they are um, done, so I'm not seeing any changes here. Now we need to repeat the process once again for files. Right now we changed permission for directories. So I'll right click once again, go to file permissions. And here, instead of 744, I'll make it 644. Once at 644, I'll once again include or enable the recurse into subdirectories option. And this time, I'll select the second option, which is apply to files only. So 744 was for directories and 644 is for files. Once this is done, click OK. Once again, it might take some time depending on how many images you already have because it will apply these permissions to every single image on your website or that you uploaded. So if you have 100 images, it might take some time. Once the processing is done, well, technically we have finished the process. It should work now as intended as regular. So let me just minimize this and go back to our WordPress website and I'll just refresh the page a couple of times just to make sure everything else is working fine. And now I'll just drag and drop an image directly on here. And let's see if it works and it should work fine. Now, the image is uploaded, but sometimes there might be some caching issues because I'm testing this out a few different times, or you might see this. Now, in this case, I'll recommend you try and make one more change on your FTP service or FTP account. I'll just go back to FTP here and go back to uploads here, right click and change file permissions once again. And instead of 744 for directories, we'll try and just make this 755 because sometimes you have some issues with 744. So if if you if if only you have issues just like this, where even after making it to 744, you can't see the images, then make it 755. Make sure to change the recursion to directories only. This is important. 755 recurs apply to directories only. Let's click OK and then just wait for it to finish. This might take some time and I'll just refresh it once again. And now it's working. So I'll just add a couple of or uh, upload a bunch of images to the site just to give you a demonstration that this 
is intended. So I'll be uploading, I think, four or five images at once. And all of these images should work absolutely fine, right? So beautiful. All these images are now being uploaded. They are being shown here. You can see those images directly. And if you add them to posts, pages, or all the existing content in your site, if you use any of these images, they should just start working normally on your website as well. So that's the process. That's how you fix file permissions inside WordPress or that's how you fix image upload issues in WordPress by fixing the file permissions on your server using FTP. If the solution works for you, let me know in the comments that it worked for you or just press the like button. That works too. In case you have any other problems with WordPress, let me know in the comments so I can help you solve those by pointing you to the right videos or just creating new videos about this. You're watching Yuvraj from the WB Beginner channel and I hope to see you in the next video very soon. Take care.